Seems like everyone wants to have a real true friend, and some of us do have a true friend in life. And what we're going to study in this little sound bite of a doctrine, uh, the doctrine's actually far more extensive, but it's just something for you to watch to get an idea of what this ministry is all about. Well, what is it to be a good friend, and what, is, what does it mean to have a true friend? And uh, we consider this category three love, for there are really three categories of love in the human race. Love for God, love for your right man or right woman, and then of course love for your friends. The problem today is hypocrisy. It's very difficult to find a true friend because of hypocrisy. Now we note and understand and have probably heard of the friendship between David and Jonathan. And the principle of this uh, love that is found between friends is found in Proverbs 17, 17. It's found in 1 Samuel 20, 41 through 42. Now, if you are trying to have a friendship, but they ignore you and there's no reciprocity and no type of love is returned, forget it. Don't pursue it. Don't become a stalker. We're Christians. And uh, you should have enough common sense to know people have free will, and if they don't like you, then just chalk it up to, well, they're missing out. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but still, you are not to get upset. But if you have a true friend, they will never stab you in the back. And we have a lot of that going on today among Christians who get among each other in fellowship, what they call fellowship. Christian fellowship is actually toward God. But they call it Christian fellowship, and while they think they have all these friends and are buddied up with them, as soon as you turn your back, they are stabbing you with a knife. That's not a true friend. That's a hypocrite. Having a true friend means that you can have a pleasant and relaxing environment around this person. You're always relaxed around true friends. It means they don't guilt manipulate. They don't bring up your sins, past, present, or think about your future ones and what they'll say to you when you commit them. There are people like that, by the way. But true friends don't do that. True friends don't use things that you've said in the past against you. Proverbs 10, 12 puts it this way. Love covers all transgressions. It means a true friend's not going to gossip about you. You see, when you have a true friend and you're close to someone, they get to see your feet of clay, but they keep their mouth shut. And they allow you to live, and they let live. That is a true friend. Love covers all transgressions. So you can relax around your true friends. True friends don't compete with you. A lot of people get together and they call it Christian fellowship and all they are doing is competing against each other trying to see how many Bible verses they can post or how many Bible verses they know versus their other friend. And when you get into the legalistic side of the old sin nature and you get into churches that have leavened the loaf and they are in legalism, it becomes impossible to find a true friend because you're always stabbed in the back as we just studied. And you can't really relax anymore because they know something about you and they do gossip. And they're in constant competition with you. Now a true friend, they'll never stab you in the back socially or economically. And what I mean is they won't use you. Maybe you have some money and they're not just hanging around you because you have money. A true friend will hang around you when you have money and when you are broke. And when you are broke, sometimes a true friend will lend you money. doesn't have to, but he could. 
And we have a lot of mixed up ideas about marriage, of course. We know that concerning this country. And as a result, we have screwed up ideas about friendship as well. Everyone wants to be a user in this dog-eat-dog -dog world, but as Christians, we should act as royalty and follow the royal honor code, which is what? Well, our Lord said, do unto others as you would have uh, them do unto you. And that was for the Old Testament. In the New Testament, you now have confidence in God, spiritual self-esteem, and you move to the place to where you can be a true friend. And again, just as in marriage and friendship, you have to be the right friend. In other words, are you the one stabbing people in the back? You're not. You're no friend of anyone. Are you the one who gossips and maligns and judges? You see, when you go to work and you are around people, oftentimes you'll find groups and you'll find uh, cliques and all they do is talk about people and run people down. You stay away from those cliques because as soon as you hook up with that, you'll be doing the same thing, and as soon as you're not around, they're stabbing you in the back. And then you're stabbing them in the back. What kind of friendship is that? That is not friendship. Again, Proverbs 10, 12, love covers all transgressions. In other words, your friend's got your back. You might be wrong, but your friend's got your back. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, friendship between males. Now, they, your friend may have been in a bar and he got a little too rowdy. And he, he's the type of person who drinks too much and when he drinks he becomes angry and rowdy. And so he gets a fight started and people start beating up on the friend. Now, a true friend, even though his friend was wrong and getting drunk and rowdy, He'll, he's got his back. He still has his back. And he covers all transgressions. Romans 12, 9. Let your love be without hypocrisy. That's the big problem among Christendom. Hypocrites. They say they love you. They'll smile at you and be sweet. But they're full of hypocrisy. And you can't be a true friend and at the same time be full of hypocrisy. Romans 12, 9 again. Let your love be without hypocrisy. Abhor evil. What's evil? What's it referring to in hypocrisy? Gossip, maligning, judging, malice. All of the sins of the mental attitude and verbal sins. The worst of them. And you are to abhor evil. You are to abhor it. When you walk, uh, let's say you're walking outside at work on your break, and you walk past a clique and you hear them talking about so and so and so and so, you should abhor that and keep going. Keep walking. If you have to go and do whatever you do alone, it's far better than getting mixed up into that mess. Although I know that's about all that's out there. But you can find a true friend. God will bring along a true friend. If, if, it's his, if it's in his will, it's not necessary to even have a true friend. But most people like to have that interaction, and they like to have friendship, and they like to do things with other people, and it's normal. But just as in marriage, now, picking the wrong friend is a much e it's much easier to get out of that than picking the wrong person in marriage. But picking the wrong friend can still cause you a lot of grief. Not only that, they can have such an influence over your life that they can pull you outside of the spiritual life and eventually make you a reversionist. What's a reversionist? Uh, well, it's what the Bapt Baptist would call a backslider. It's what we call reversionism because Backsliding, they always think of backsliding as, you know, I got saved and I got off the bottle and I stopped doing certain things and they turned over a new leaf 
and now suddenly they're seen in the bar and they're living it up again and they say, oh, so-and-so is backsliding. And that's what they taught. They didn't teach back then that they would lose their salvation. They just said they were backsliding in their spiritual life. And they always had their pet sins that they would pick out. But really, the only way you backslide in your spiritual life is when you quit rebounding and when you stop being filled with God the Holy Spirit and when you stop with... That must be my best friend calling me, but I'm sorry. I, I can't answer the phone right now. I got to, I got to talk about this stuff, all right? Call you back later. Okay. So you have this being free from hypocrisy. Now I've lost what I was even thinking about. But anyone to whom you have to give a false impression, anyone to whom you have to act differently than what you really are, that's not a true friend. And in high school, oftentimes, you want to be part of a clique, you have to change your own old personality, you have to change the way you dress and everything else in order to be part of the clique. And then when you're let into the clique, you consider them your friends, but they're still stabbing you in the back. Anyone to whom you must give a false impression, not a real friend. Now, some people never have friends, and there's different reasons why. Uh, it's not necessarily because you're arrogant, but some people never have friends because they are arrogant. They are full of pride. They are full of hypocrisy, and they have an ability to deceive others. Now, when you have a true friend, they're going to be objective about every situation. They will not be hypersensitive. In other words, they're not going to run around thinking you're out to do them wrong at some point or looking for you to do them wrong or wishing that you would do them wrong so they could have some drama in their life. There's people like that, and they are true friends. Here are some principles about true friendship. You can say anything to a true friend. 2 Samuel 1.26 mentions this. And in Galatians 5.13, it says, Through love, serve one another. And the serving of one another doesn't mean you are necessarily, that's not anything spiritual, except that you're in fellowship, or you may not be, but this serving one another has to do with the fact that in conversation, you can share whatever you want with your friend, your best friend, and they won't judge you. They won't run around and gossip about you. They won't pick up the phone and call your mommy or daddy. They're your true friend. They've got your back. Too bad a lot of marriages don't function in that way in which both of you in marriage have each other's back. But in marriage, there's a lot, a lot of different dynamic going on and oftentimes it's always try to destroy the other person. Always tell about the other person's faults and foibles and their pet area of weakness, which we all have one. So you don't have to blush. When a man's soul is sweet to his friend, Proverbs 27, 9 through 10. A man's soul is sweet to his friend. And in fact, you can love a friend more than a relative when the friend has Bible doctrine in the soul. And uh, that's why in Scripture uh, we have David and his, uh, Jonathan as best friends. But he forsook David for his father. But really... David loved Jonathan far more than Saul ever loved Jonathan. And it seems weird because Jonathan is the king's son. But in this case, it was absolutely true. David had a great capacity for love. And this is where Jonathan went astray. He picked his family over his friends. And now you say, now, well, now you're sounding crazy. 
No, I'm not. It's in the Bible. And because he chose his father, Saul, to go with him over David, he ended up dying to sin face to face with death on a battlefield right beside his father. If he had stuck with David, he would have been part of the royalty, he would have been part of the palace, and he still would have been David's best friend. He made a mistake, a big one. And so you can have wonderful friendship in Christianity, but just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're going to have all wonderful friends. A lot of times people, when they first believe, they think, wow, everyone's so sweet, I'll have no problem having a lot of friends in this church. And then the next thing you know, you're totally disillusioned because of all the hypocrisy, all the legalism. Well, it's the old sin nature. So if you have found a true friend who's always got your back, then you've been graced out by God. Now in life, you will have a few true friends. But you have to have a relaxed mental attitude toward everyone, not just your friends. You must have a relaxed mental attitude toward all believers, including the worst of believers, including the ones you think are the most obnoxious. You still have to have that relaxed mental attitude. And when you have that, this love overflows. That a love that you have toward all believers from that relaxed mental attitude. Your best friend sees that as well. So again, a man's soul is sweet to his friend. And in Proverbs 27, 9 through 10, it teaches that we sometimes inherit friends from our parents. You can love a friend more than a relative, as I've noted. Proverbs 27, 9 through 10 teaches that we sometimes inherit friends from our parents. Some of the best friends that you may have ever had in life, you inherited from your father and mother. And in true friendship, there, you don't have to think about a generation gap. You could have a 60-year-old man, uh, best friends with a 30-year-old man. A lot of people might look at it as weird, but that's none of their business. So when you have true friendship, that crosses generational lines. Friendship is closer than family love. I know this for sure. Have you ever been to Thanksgiving with your family? And have you thought, man, I really wish I could be out with my friend right now. And your friend is over at his family at Thanksgiving thinking, man, I wish I could be hanging out with my friend doing things enjoyable. I wish I could go out fishing instead of hanging around these folks, these relatives. Now, if you have a normal family, then that's how you think. Because families are dysfunctional, and they have been since Adam and Eve. But once you find that true friend, well, that's where you want to hang out. And in this true friendship, yes, you can even come to love your friend more than your family. But this does not mean that you cannot have a friend in the family. You could have a best friend in the family. Your dad could be your best friend. Your mom could be your best friend. Your sister could be your best friend. Your brother. It all depends upon the integrity. And you always have to be objective, and you always have to look in the mirror at yourself to make sure you are being the right friend.